In this training, I will give you an overview of the Risk Register tab in Risk Manageable Template Software. The Risk Register tab is available from the Home tab under the Risk section. In the Risk Register tab, you can record information related to the core aspect of any risk management practice. A risk refers to the potential effect of uncertainty on an objective as it is defined in the ISO 31000 risk management standard. However, other risk definitions can also be used in this Risk Register tab as far as risks are directly related to objectives. The Risk Register tab is paired with the Risk Parameters tab for the customization of drop-down lists and automated cells, as well as for their color coding. In the Risk Register tab, the validity status of each record and the overall register is available in the leftmost column. For more information on the validity status in registers, please refer to the relevant training. The first columns of the Risk Register tab is where you create the new risk record. You select the status of the risk if the risk is open or closed. You type the risk statement of the risk. And you select the risk owner. The list of risk owners in the drop-down list is automatically extracted from the People Register tab. For more information on the People Register tab, please refer to the relevant training. The section at risk is where you select the structure at risk and then the objective at risk. This sequence is most effective, especially if you have a long list of objectives to choose from. You must first select the structure at risk, which is the structure which owns the objective at risk. The list of structures in the drop-down list is automatically extracted from the structure register tab. After you selected the structure at risk, you can then select the objective at risk. Simply click on the cell Objective at Risk and the Risk Management tool will automatically create a drop-down list which includes only those objectives which belong to the structure at risk you selected. If, for any reason, the list of objectives is not refreshed, simply reselect the structure at risk before clicking again on the cell Objective at Risk. The Objective Owner is automatically displayed based on the information available in the Objective Register tab for the Objective at Risk. For more information on the Structure Register tab and the Objective Register tab, please refer to the relevant training. The section Risk Custom Lists is where you select an item in each Risk Custom List which is activated. For more information on the use of Custom Lists, please refer to the relevant training. The section Risk Elements is where you record the risk sources involved and the possible risk events which may trigger the risk to occur. The sections Risk Criteria and Quantitative Value at Risk are automatically extracted from the Objective Register tab for the Objective at Risk. This is useful information for entering data in the following sections. The section Inherent Risk Levels is where you record the likelihood and consequence levels before any treatment or control is applied to the risk. Actually, you can choose to hide and to not use this section altogether. In the Options tab under the Modules Management section, you can reach the Risk Module section where you can select to show or hide the Inherent Risk Assessment feature in the Risk Register tab and throughout the Risk Management tool. For more information on showing or hiding the inherent risk assessment feature, please refer to the relevant training. If you decide to show and use the inherent risk assessment feature, you simply select the inherent level from 1 to 5 for the risk likelihood and for the risk consequence. For risks with an objective at risk where a quantitative value is needed, you also enter an inherent value at risk. All other columns are automatically filled up to provide you with additional key information. The text for likelihood and consequence are extracted from the Risk Criteria tab or the Objective Register tab, depending on how the use of criteria is selected in the Objective Register tab for the objective at risk. The columns Level, Exposure, and Zone are automatically calculated based on the likelihood and consequence levels you selected. The text for exposure is extracted from the Risk Criteria tab and the color coding of the zone is set in the Risk Matrix Settings tab. For more information on the Objective Register tab, the Risk Criteria tab, and the Risk Matrix Settings tab, please refer to the relevant training. 
The section acceptable risk levels is where you record the likelihood and consequence levels intended as the target to reach and maintain for the risk. You simply select the acceptable levels from 1 to 5 like you do for the inherent risk levels. For risks with an objective at risk where a quantitative value is needed, you also enter an acceptable value at risk. All other columns are automatically filled up to provide you with additional key information as already explained for the section inherent risk levels. The section residual risk levels is where you record the likelihood and consequence levels after the current treatment or control is applied to the risk. You simply select the residual levels from 1 to 5 like you do for inherent and acceptable risk levels. And for risks with an objective at risk where a quantitative value is needed, you also enter a residual value at risk. All other columns are automatically filled up as already explained. The section gap targeted is automatically calculated and color coded based on the settings in the risk parameters tab. This section compares inherent risk levels and acceptable risk levels. These columns display explicit information about the gap which must be addressed for the likelihood and consequence of the risk. This feature will save you a huge amount of time when verifying the meaningfulness of levels entered for inherent risk and acceptable risk. The section gap controlled is automatically calculated and color coded based on the settings in the risk parameters tab. This section compares inherent risk levels and residual risk levels. These columns display explicit information on the gap which may or may not have been addressed for the likelihood and consequence of the risk. This feature will save you a huge amount of time when assessing the progress made with the treatment or control currently being applied. The section gap to control is automatically calculated and color coded based on the settings in the risk parameters tab. This section compares residual risk levels and acceptable risk levels. These columns display explicit information on the gap which still needs to be addressed for the likelihood and consequence of the risk. This feature will save you a huge amount of time when assessing where additional effort is needed to reach the acceptable target levels. The section Worst Risk Gap is automatically calculated and color coded based on the settings in the Risk Parameters tab. This section compares the gap targeted, gap controlled, and gap to control. These columns display explicit information on the worst gap for likelihood for consequence and, as a summary, the worst gap between likelihood and consequence. This feature will save you a huge amount of time for getting a valuable snapshot of where additional attention and effort should be applied when considering altogether the inherent, acceptable, and residual risk levels. The section Risk Review is where you record key information related to the regular follow-up of the risk. Like with any other reviews, you record the date of last review, the reviewer's name, the frequency of review, and the date for the next review. Finally, the section Risk Notes is where you type any comments you may want to add. Et voilà! For more information, please visit managenable.com. Thank you.